What's up guys, it's the Sound Alchemist, and I'm back at it again, giving you 40 facts on the Warhammer universe. Today, I will be diving into the treacherous relics and artifacts of the traitorous Legions of Chaos. So let's let the galaxy burn. For 10,000 years, the Chaos Space Marines of the Traitor Legions have waged their wars of vengeance against the Imperium. From the demon worlds of the Eye of Terror, they plot the destruction of the empire they once helped to build. They have neither forgotten nor forgiven the loyalist who chased them there after the Horus Heresy, or the false emperor that they served. Protected from the passage of time by the warping effects of the Eye and the patronage of the Chaos Gods, these warriors of the traitor legions will not rest until they see the galaxy set aflame and the Emperor's rotted carcass cast down from the Golden Throne. So with that, we will talk about the Chaotic Artifacts of the Black Legion. The Chaos Artifacts of this Legion are relics of incredible power that Abaddon has spent millennia seeking out to serve in his eternal war of vengeance against the Imperium. The Crucible of Lies It is impossible to describe the Crucible of Lives for its image is unique to the beholder. One gifted with the witch sight may perceive it as a rippling cloak of saturated warp energy. A warrior may see it as an amulet wreathed in balefire. Regardless of his appearance, the crucible of lies defies natural law to distort the blows of the wearer's enemies. But such power does not come without a price. The Eye of the Night one of the artifacts used by Abaddon to take command of his dreaded Blackstone Fortress, the Eye of the Night, is a multifaceted obsidian crystal of unknown origin. The slightest caress of the Ebon Beam it can unleash causes machines to suffer massive power failure or catastrophic internal damage. Not even the thickest of armor can resist its malignant touch. The Hand of Darkness an ancient device infused with the atrophian power of the warp, the hand of darkness decays all and everything that its wielder touches. Flesh dissolves from the bone and armor is reduced to little more than pools of liquid slag. It was with this fabled artifact that Abaddon finally gained access to the inner workings of the Blackstone Fortresses, before later surrendering it to the demon Primarch Mortarion in order to secure allegiance of the Death Guard for his 13th Black Crusade. The Last Memory of the Euranthos Mikkel was a psyker who was responsible for the annihilation of his species, the Euranthros. The psyker's power was so great that he was torn apart by the warp's energies that he wielded, even as his planet's populace was emulated by the resistant Firestorm. Unwilling to waste the power of such a talented student, Zeech bound the essence of the dying race into a small crystal. One who carries this gem can access a fragment of Mikkel's power and unleash it upon his foes, though not without risk. The Skull of Kurnagar Kurnagar was a mighty champion of the Dark Gods long before the Horus Heresy and the rise of the Space Marines. So masterful was this ancient warrior that he once boasted that he could not be killed in battle. Sadly for Kurnagar, his claim was proven false when Korn sent forth Skulltaker to challenge the warrior and take his skull. It adorned Skulltaker's cloak for centuries before being replaced. It is said that, despite his defeat, Kurnagar's indomitable spirit is still bound within the skull, and it protects the one who carries it from harm, be it physical or arcane. The Spine Shard Blade, believed to have been forged from the spinal column of a mighty keeper of secrets known as Kalith the Purient, the Spine Shard Blade reverberates with quivering essence of the demon's final, lavish death throes. The artifacts of the Alpha Legion are often as secretive in their purpose and design as the Legion's champion that wield them. They rarely display any ostentation, yet their power is never to be underestimated. The Mind Veil Shimmering with illusion, the Mind Veil is a long cloak stitched with the interlocking teeth of Dostoy's Prime's chameleonic tiger sharks. 
So potent are the spells of confusion and dislocation cast upon it that the bearer and his kin are accompanied by incorporeal mirages that mirror their appearance perfectly. Stranger still, at a chanted command in the dark tongue, the wearer's true location and that of his doubleganger can switch places, an instant translocation that leaves his enemies gaping in confusion. The death of those fooled is never far away. The Blade of the Hydra Long ago, this oversized chainsword was of purely ceremonial use. Since the demon prince Garul of the Nine Sondered Souls was bound inside it, the blade has been a fiendish tool of destruction. Those with a will strong enough to control its multiple thrusting mindsets can cause the sawtooth blade to shimmer into not one, but several swords that gnaw and gnash with an immortal hunger. These extra blades are insubstantial when the wielder wields it, and it's razor sharp when the flesh of his enemies is near. The Viper's Bite is an ornate bolt gun that has a wide serpent head muzzle and a magazine that never seems to run dry. When it fires, it makes no noise louder than a dry hiss. The projectiles it fires glow with acrid green flame the energy swathing each bolt so virulent that they can sizzle through even the ancient warplate of Terminator armored veterans. The Drake Scale Plate A suit of Corvus Alpha pattern power armor forged by an ancient tech savant of the Dark Mechanicum, this battle plate incorporates the living titanium scales of the Mika Sky Drake. Its pauldrons Vambrances and Greaves are so well protected by that elder beast's innate resistance to fire that even a flamestorm cannon's channeled inferno splashes harmlessly aside like water from smooth pillars of obsidian. The Icon of Insurrection This eight-pointed standard top is no mere symbol, but an ensorcered semi-diabolic magnet for chaotic energies that broadcasts thoughts of anarchy and rebellion into the minds of all who behold it. When held aloft amongst the crowd, it can turn malcontents into death squads and dabbers in heresy into seething, frenzied maniacs bent on burning the realms of men to ash. The Hydra's Teeth The Hydra's Teeth are bolt rounds with an ammo casing that must be kept slick with blood-laced oil lest they detonate prematurely and cause irrevocable damage to the wielder. The legend goes that they are sentient in the manner of demon weapons, and that sorcerous powers have somehow given them a terrible hunger for destruction. Once fired, they seek out the flesh of victims, regardless of how well hidden they may be, before exploding in a blast of eye-searing, lung-scorching gas that can turn exposed flesh into black sludge. The artifacts borne by the warsmiths and lesser lords of the Iron Warriors are much like their bearers, brutish, unsubtle, and designed for mass destruction. On to the Warp Breacher. This complex net of mecha tendrils incorporates a large ivory tooth claw. Every log and scissor has been inscribed with a dozen runes in the dark tongue, each symbol no larger than a quill tip but potent nonetheless. The wearer of Warp Creature can use the claw to reach into the Empyrean, plucking a demon attracted to the carnage of the battlefield, and then thrusting its soul into the corporeal form of a nearby vehicle. Such a favored mechanism will growl like a living thing as a chaotic animus within rails against the imprisonment, to the detriment of all mortal creatures nearby. The Nest of Mecha Serpents The morass of mechanical tentacles that grace the wearer's back are possessed by an insidious and cruel consciousness. Not in fact a single relic of the Long War, but rather a collection of several small and deadly demon engines, the coil is as spiteful and fierce as any mortal worshipper of chaos, loyal only to its master. When a worthy foal comes close, the mecha tendrils will snake from their master's back to slither quickly across the battleground, whipping around legs, arms, and necks to throttle the enemy so that their master might deliver the killing blow. The Axe of the Forge Master That which this cog-tooth axe creates, it can also destroy, 
for the masters of the demon forges have long had to ensure dominance over their creations with acts of might as well as cunning. An inherent authority over machine bleeds from the metallic skin of this massive great axe. Such are the energies of unmaking that are bound to this axe's haft that a single blow can turn adamantium hull tanks to a pile of rusted scrap. Even Xenos war engines simply come apart when struck hard enough, disintegrating with screams of tortured materials. The Flesh Metal Exoskeleton This warrior embodies the chant, Iron Within, Iron Without, in a quite literal sense. His body, long ago clad in the flesh metal so prized by the Eye of Terror's warpsmith, has bonded with him a protective war gear so that his anatomy and metallic on the inside as well as the out. A blade that manages to penetrate his armor will blunt itself on the hardened flesh beneath, and the return blow will not be long in coming. Even those enemies that somehow deal the warrior significant damage will see their adversary's cabled muscles re-knit in a frenzy of silvered fibers until they are rebuilt as strong as ever. The Cranium Malvolus This iron-clad death head was once a servo skull taken from the Halls of Terra. Though intended as little more than a trophy, under the ownership of the Iron Warriors it has mutated into a mouthpiece for the mind-shattering language of the Soul Forges. The coded blurts of dark tongue it emits are potent enough to undo the machine spirits of enemy technology. Its scrap code chant is so maddening that opposing war engines will spontaneously emulate themselves in order to avoid spending another second near the floating, archaic device. The Siege Breaker Mace This mace was created with acts of destructive symbolism in mind. When swung with sufficient force, it can blast rockcrete walls to scattering shards, allowing the wielder to stomp impetuously through the dusty remnants of a barrier that once seemed insurmountable. The most favored champions within the Night Lord's Legion wield powerful and deadly relics, designed with a simple but cool purpose in mind, murder. The Scourging Chains the scourging chains once jangled from the rafters of the Primarch Conrad Kurz's throne room. Many a soul judged guilty by the Night Hunter has been hanged from their jagged spikes until death. Appearing talent as corded tendons as the wearer flies towards his chosen victims, these spiked chains loosen and loop at the last moment before impact, by lashing out to catch their wearer's prey, and then contracting sharply, they bring the enemy close often onto an outstretched blade or crackling sets of lightning claws. The Claws of the Black Hunt These vicious hooked talons have spilt the blood of thousands since their creation in the Soul Forge. Worn by the Master of the Black Hunt, a vicious ritual that precedes the greatest of the Night Lord invasions. They are so encrusted with gore that they are almost black. This congealed fluid is so thick it cannot even be seared away by the vicious energy fields that run about each claw. This is seen by some as a clear sign of a gory blessing from the gods of chaos, and their crackling field is so powerful it burns cloth at a yard's distance. Even when the wielder swipes the air near a foe, not quite making contact, the victim's armor and flesh part as if slashed open by a fierce and invisible beast. The Talons of the Night Terror Worn over a pair of boots, these talons give the wielder the appearance of some eldritch raptor beast that has evolved to better disembowel its prey. Should one sporting these bladed atrocities descend feet first into the ranks of his prey, the talons will clutch and rip, slicing and eviscerating all those too slow to evade. A heartbeat later, the crushing weight of the Chaos Space Marine Weirer will be brought to bear with sickening, spine-breaking impact. The Vox Demonicus The chill whispers of the Vox have unmanned brave commanders and undermined masterful strategies. Many a well-laid plan have been torn to shreds by its baleful curse. Conrad Kurz's Orb Said to have sat upon the arm of the Throne of Curse, 
This orb was a gift from Magnus, Primarch of the Thousand Suns. It was given to help Kurz focus his precognitive visions, though in truth, the Night Lords' Primarch never felt the need to use it. Now it is his sons that make use of this strange device, scrying possible futures in its depths, even as they take to battle their enemies. The Stormbolt Plate This artificial armor was fashioned from a strange metal smelted in the darkest pits of the long dead Nostramo. It is not the War Plate's incredible durability, however, that has made it so prized amongst the Night Lords, for its wreathed in a cloying darkness, and now natural skine of midnight that perpetually shrouds the wearer. So it is that a warrior with the Stormbolt Plate pounces on their prey from the shadows. And with that, that ends our first part into the relics of the Chaos Space Marines. Let me know which chapter was your favorite. Perhaps it was the Night Lords or the ever murderous Black Legion. Don't forget guys, we do have a Patreon page, so head on over there where you guys can get many videos for a simple dollar a month. And as always, I have been the Sound Alchemist, part of One Mind Syndicate, and I am signing out.